Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys the basics of how to use a curling iron. I get a lot of questions from clients asking me after I finish their curl, they're like, how did you get your curls to look like this? Cause mine never look like this. And they usually have issues with getting them nice and smooth or getting the ends on the straighter side. A lot of my clients use wands instead of curling irons because they just can't figure out how to physically use it. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use a clamp curling iron, the different types of curling irons and which one you should be using for your hair length, the do's and don'ts of curls, the basics. I'm gonna try and cover it all with making it very simple and easy for you guys to follow along. So if you're as excited as I am about this video, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So first things first, you wanna make sure you start off with a nice smooth blow dry. If your hair dries nice and smooth and straight, then you're probably good to go with just letting it air dry but make sure you use your heat protectant before you start curling at all. For me, I put in my heat protectant right before I blow dried my hair, so I'm good to go. So I'm gonna go over the different sizes of curling irons. It always depends on your hair length and the type of curl you're wanting to create. Now for my length of hair, it's about chest length, um, so it's about medium to long. For my hair, to create a nice modern beach wave, I like to use an inch and a half curling iron. Now this one is a great one for my length of hair and longer. Layers are always gonna give you the best results. If you have all one length hair and your hair is pretty long, then you might notice that your curls weigh down and they don't hold throughout the day. So maybe go get some long layers, some medium length layers, give yourself some bounce and movement in your hair and you'll definitely get those curls that you're looking for. For hair that is a little bit shorter than mine, maybe up to about collarbone, depending on where your collarbone is, maybe shoulder as well, um, I would use an inch and a quarter. And for anything from the jaw to the shoulder, I would use an inch curling iron. So I'm gonna show you guys the difference of sizes, smallest, to biggest. These ones are the main ones. If you use anything smaller than an inch, you probably have pixie length haircut. If you're using something bigger than an inch and a half, which I do have a two inch curling iron and I use that in my previous YouTube video if you guys want to check that out. That gives me the most beautiful smooth, soft blowout look without having to use the blow dryer and a round brush. It's kind of a cheap way of getting a salon style blowout. So if you want to check that out, I'll have that linked in the description down below. If you have really long hair and you only have an inch curling iron, you're going to get really, really tight curls. If you have really short hair and you have a really big iron, then your curls are probably just going to be kind of rounded almost like you just blew it out with the blow dryer and a round brush. So make sure you have the proper size curling iron and then you'll get the perfect style curls. So like I said, for my length of hair, I like to use an inch and a half. So before I get it heated up and plugged in, I'm gonna show you guys, my Alexa just kind of made a little beep noise. So before I get it plugged in and heated up, I wanna show you how to use the curling iron because I don't wanna have to keep you know, using the iron and burning my hair. So I just want to straighten my part, make sure it's where I want it. And I like to start, my hair's pretty thick, but I still like to start kind of right behind the ear. So I'm gonna section that out and I'm gonna split this section into two, right where I can see it. Sometimes I like to curl all of this hair away from my face and all of this hair on this side away from my face. And it is a really easy way to do it. If that is the way that's easiest for you, then by all means do it. I would say it gives it more of a soft curl than it would a beach wave look. If you alternate your curls, so let's say this front piece, I'm gonna curl away from my face. This next piece, I'm gonna curl inwards. And then the next piece, I'm gonna curl away. So that's what alternating curls means. That's going to give you a really nice beach wave look. I'm going to throw up a couple of different pictures for you guys to see and compare. Um, one of them is going to have the curls all one direction on one side, all one direction on the other side and how that meets in the back. 
and then alternating curls and what that looks like from the back as well. So try them both out, see what you like. They're both perfectly okay, just whatever's comfortable for you. With a curling iron, a regular curling iron, you have the clamp. And this is kind of how you hold it most of the time. Your thumb is what's lifting and dropping the clamp. If your hair is on the coarse side, then you probably want to use a higher heat. But for me, I have medium. So I like to go in between directly in the middle of the heat and the highest heat. You don't need it on a super high heat. If your hair is on the finer side, make sure your heat is lower. So I'm gonna pretend as if I'm curling my hair alternating. And I usually take these bottom sections. I'll usually split it into three sections. I try to make them pretty even. But I'll take the first section of hair and the clamp is gonna be in the front for the pieces framing your face. So this piece is right next to my face. So I'm gonna place that right at the root and you're gonna smooth, 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 maybe to about half of the way, curl it up. So I'm just twisting and you can use both hands too. So you're gonna hold it there and unravel. See how I did that? So it's wrapped around. I'm gonna drop it from around the hair and the hair is still in the iron and it looks like it's twisted. Then you wanna drop it almost all the way, leave a little bit of hair, twist it back up to where that twist is, drop it out and just smooth out the rest of the hair. Try and just practice that with the curling iron off, get comfortable with your hands. When you move to this side, again, the curls are gonna be away from your face. So I'm gonna smooth, smooth, and the clamp is in the front. Then you're gonna twist, drop it out from behind, slide it down almost all the way, roll back up, drop it from behind, and smooth the rest of the way out. So now if you're gonna curl your hair all in one direction on both sides, then you have that down pretty much. You're gonna do the same thing. Curl away from the face, away from the face, away from the face, away from the face, and then you could start on a new section. If you're gonna alternate, you're gonna take that second section of hair. The clamp is gonna be on the back side. So you're gonna clamp and slide down just as you would the other way, but you're gonna curl it inward and then you're gonna unravel, slide until it's almost to the end, roll it back up, unravel and smooth the rest of the way out. And then we're going to alternate a section on this side as well. So clamp at the back, slide halfway down, roll inward towards the base, Unravel, slide almost all the way down, roll it up, unravel and smooth, smooth, smooth. So that's how you would alternate the curls. Now, like I said, it depends on the style of curl you're going for. 99% of the time you wanna curl the curls away from the face. I know a lot of people are gonna tell you never ever to curl inwards toward the face but that's where they're wrong because if you're going for an old Hollywood look, you're gonna curl the curls inward towards the face. That's a whole different subject though. That's for a specific, more vintage look. Um, if you guys want a tutorial on that, let me know. If you guys want more of a vintage hair tutorial, I can give you guys that. But this is kind of a modern day curl. So like I said, 99% of the time you're gonna curl away from the face. That's when the clamp is in the front because you're gonna curl away. If the clamp is in the back, you're gonna curl in towards the face, okay? Clamp in the front, smooth it, reel it in away from the face. I'm gonna let that heat up. Then you're going to unwrap, smooth it almost all the way down, curl it back in, let that heat up, unravel, and just smooth the rest of the way out. And so this is what a curl away from the face is gonna look like. 
and then I'm going to alternate my curls. So if you were not alternating, go ahead and continue this on all three sections or as many sections as you need to use. So the second section, the clamp is going to be facing the back. So roll it inward towards the face. This one is now gonna go away from my face. I'm gonna let those cool down. Don't run your fingers through them, don't touch them, anything. Just throw them back, forget about them. So you're just gonna throw those back and we're gonna start on the next section. So I'm gonna go right about at my eyebrow. So this first section is going to be away from my face because it's right at my hairline. Now, I never explained why we only go halfway. And the reason we do that is because if you slide the curling iron all the way down, all the way down to here and curl it up, these ends, which are already really dry and fragile, are getting heat the entire time you're curling it. And this, where you want the curl to hold and you want the ends to be a little bit straighter, it's not going to get the curl because it's going to be wrapped over all that hair. So that is why it's always best to only go about halfway and curl this top part because that's what you want to curl. And that is what is going to help your curls stay throughout the day as well. So these ends, that's why we leave them out. That's why we, we don't want to give them so much heat because it's just going to make your hair that much drier and that much more damaged. I'm gonna do kind of an angle till I reach the middle and split this right down the center. Now for the top section, I like to start at the back and work my way forward. Once I get towards the front of the face, I usually kind of drop the alternating section part. So the back section is curled inward and the rest of them forward are curled away from the face. And this is because I don't really want these front pieces being curled inwards toward my face. If this second one is supposed to be technically alternating inwards toward my face, it's too close to my face and it's right at the top that I don't want it to curl inwards. You can try it that way, see how it looks. I prefer not to do it that way. So I went ahead and curled it away from my face. Now I have one last section. I'm gonna curl away from my face and it's on the shorter side. And because I have a larger iron, I'm gonna show you how quick this needs to be. And I'm gonna curl almost all the way down and reel it in. Okay, then unravel once and smooth the rest of the way. So the reason that we went almost all the way down is because the piece is so short. If I went halfway and wrapped it, it wouldn't have much to wrap around anyway because it's so short on a large iron. So I'm gonna split this into two sections and clip off this top section. We're gonna do the same thing we did on this last section. Split this into four 
and this last section is going to curl inwards towards the face and the rest of it is going to curl away. We're gonna let the curls cool because that is what's gonna help them stay in place. If you comb them out too early while they're still hot, then your curls are most likely gonna fall right out and your work is all gonna be gone. So make sure to let the curls cool. If you need to, as you can see, I do have some curls. They're a little too curly on the ends for my preference. With my curling iron, I'm gonna go right on the ends here with the clamp in front and just smooth it out. Clamp and smooth. And it just smooths it right on out. I go right about to where it just curls, right at the end there. Clamp and smooth straight down. Don't bend it either way. Just clamp and straight down. So if you have a straightener and this method isn't working out for you, then go ahead and try the straightener. Just do the same thing right at the ends, just clamp the straightener and smooth it right out. Okay, so now you can actually go in and feel to the touch that they are cooler. If, there's, if they still feel a little bit warm, just let them set a little bit longer. The first step I like to do is take some hairspray. I really like the Kenra Volume Spray and just lightly spray them. You don't want to do too much because then you won't be able to comb through them. So just a light spray to give them some hold. Then I like to go in with an oil. This is the Kenra Lux Shine Oil. And depending on how frizzy or coarse your hair is, uh, use a little bit more. If your hair is on the smoother side like mine, I only used about a pump. I like to rub that pretty thoroughly through my fingers and my palms. And I'm gonna go and just take my fingers and comb about halfway down and just comb everything through. Don't go too high up because then it's just gonna weigh your hair down. You can just take the rest of it and kind of smooth out a little bit on the top. You don't wanna do too much though. Now, if your hair ends up being a little bit on the flat side, then I would take a texture spray. I really love this Schwarzkopf one. And you can just take it, spray it through, just lift and spray, lift and spray. If you need some more texture at the roots, just go ahead and do that. This also works really well as a dry shampoo. So if you're curling on dirty hair and you need a little oomph, then just go ahead and add that in. This is what it should look like. All right, so this is the finished result and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I love how long it's getting. Um, I'm not gonna have this hair color for long. I plan on darkening it fully back to my natural color. I haven't had it that way in a few years. So I'm really, really excited. If you try out the curling iron, it doesn't work out the first time, just keep trying. Um, just make sure to use lots of heat protectant and make sure that your iron is not too hot <laughs> if you're gonna keep trying over and over again. Um, don't get too mad at yourself and too frustrated because you really have to have a lot of patience and you have to be patient with yourself. You're learning something new and you may not get it the first time. It doesn't happen easily for everybody. So make sure to be patient with yourself, be calm, take your time. And if it fails the first time, then just give it a rest, try again the next time and Hopefully it works out better for you. If you guys liked this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already and don't forget to turn on post notifications. Leave a comment down below telling me what kind of video you would like to see next, whether it's hair or makeup. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.